Right, guys, so welcome to the workout for Tuesday, the 26th of May. Um, hopefully, everybody's feeling okay after Murph. Uh, what you are going to need today is your legs and your gymnastic skills. So for those of you who did these slips last week, we're going to continue on with the progression for slips this week. So a quick refresher, slips are, they're going to be your scales, your L-sits, your inversions, your planks, and your uh, stretches. Okay, so we're just going to change the stretches this week. Uh, I'll show you a quick clip in a second of uh, options that you can do for your uh, your your skills, um, sorry, your slips, uh, progressions or regressions, depending on where you're at. Uh, if you're doing this in the Zoom class, the coach is going to go through it with you. Uh, they'll go through kind of like adaptations based upon the individual needs. But if you're doing this outside of a class, like I say, we'll just quickly brief you on uh, what the, the slips would entail. Uh, for your L sits, you're either going to need like a, a chair or two chairs, unless you're capable of doing L sits on the floor, but they are really, really tough. Um, you do need to have a lot of finger strength. Uh, I had a bit of a joke with the coaches earlier on, um, because what we tend to find people when they're doing it with their L sits uh, is they can do them on parallettes, they can do them on chairs, and they go into this position and tell us how easy it is on parallettes and boxes. Then when we put them onto the floor, they wonder why they can't manage it. Um, like I say, if, if we're here, you're not going to be able to bring your shoulder blades down any further. So you're going to tend to struggle to get any lift off the floor. So it's the shoulder blades, they go back and they go down and that gets you a lot more elevation. So it's, if you're practicing to be able to do L sits on the floor, that's your, your, your kind of like your money maker right there. It's trying to work on those scapular retractions and just work on the flexibility and the strength to get into that position. You can hear me okay, guys. Uh, testing out new microphones. Uh, just to make it a little bit clearer for you when we're doing this, so that when we're walking around classes or rooms, it should be a bit better for you. So for your front to back scale, all you're going to do, nice and simple, if I just make a little bit of room here, uh, what we want to see is arms out to the sides. Yeah. We're going to go with the front scale first. So you're going to bring that leg out in front of you, toes pointed, back leg straight, all for three to five seconds. We're then going to go forwards, Try and keep your back leg straight, hips level, hold the one, two, three. Straight back into the next one. And then back for one, two, three. When it didn't fall over. Okay, so for LSIT progressions, let's start with the basics that you could do at home. Uh, now, you could just have a chair here. Uh, and what we're going to look at is hands behind you, shoulder blades together. And then trying to lift up as high as you can into that L-sit position. Just try to keep your legs as straight as you can. Squeeze your heels together, toes pointed, right into a beautiful position. Now, we've got parallax here, but you could have uh, two chairs, uh, be a little bit higher. The chairs, to be fair, if you're fairly new to L-sits, um, they're going to give you a little bit of more freedom of movement uh, than we would do with parallax. It's very hard to start on parallax because you don't have much room for your feet to come off the ground. Uh, so what we look at doing here is set the chairs up so that the distance or the chair handles or the chair uh, seats so that it's your knuckle to your elbow distance. And that should really help you get the right position for your shoulders. We want to see the knees together. Position number one is going to be shoulders back, knees up. And try and keep the knees above the line of the hips whilst keeping your shoulder blades together. Not as easy as it looks. We're going to tend to find that most of us want to rock forward into that forward shoulder position. A little bit of a step up is just going to be 15 seconds with one leg. Uh, for me, I'm going to tend to find that I'll do maybe eight seconds with one leg, uh, eight seconds with the other leg. OCD won't let me do eight and seven, so I'll just do 16 second or a 14 second hold. Uh, so it's going to be shoulder blades together, knees up, one leg up. Yep, progression on from there is then going to be doing the same thing with both legs out in front of us. Shoulder blades together. Try and keep the knees squeezed together as well. Eventually, and I'm not very good at these, so I hope you'll excuse me, is uh, doing an L-sit on the ground. So it's going to be up onto your fingertips. Remember, shoulders back and down. Holding off the floor. I'm better than I used to be. But still not perfect. Remember, fingertips is going to give you that extra uh, the, the lift. Shoulder blades back and down is going to allow you to actually get off the floor a little bit. Handstand hold. Again, 
you could do a handstand hold because we're limited for room I can't uh, show you everything in, in a nice quick format but if you kind of set up your room so that you could do this as a flow absolutely brilliant uh, so if you're going to do um, pike handstands a couple of things try and point your toes so I don't want my toe tucked underneath I want it pushed away from me yeah and that's just going to practice squeezing my heels together get as vertical as I can and then hold for 30 seconds once you've got confidence about holding for 30 seconds we can either walk up the wall or we can kick up the wall the closer we are into the wall the more it's going to be like a freestanding handstand uh, one thing that I've learned over this lockdown because I'm quite used to doing a handstand um, you know, against a gym wall where it's flush with your fingers obviously the skirt, uh, skirting board provides that extra little bit of distance away from the wall so I tend not to fall down as much in a house as I would do in the gym where we kind of let with flush against the wall so kicking up as close as you can arms nice and straight squeeze your heels together squeeze your shoulder blades together nice active shoulders all the way through if you're struggling with that just walking up the wall is completely fine okay uh, simple one you're gonna do a 20 seconds as soon as you finish your handstand stop seeing stars come down 20 seconds side plank on each side uh, if you do struggle with the side plank a couple of things that you can do uh, for me if I'm on a hard floor it's going to be my elbow and my ankle just to take the pressure off the ankle you can bring one leg forward just into a bit of a spiral uh, side plank or you can go to the knees make sure that you squeeze and you bum in your straight line we don't want to be pushing the hips backward and squared off we want to be kind of like shoulder blades level hips nice and level as well uh, and the last one is just going to be stretches again we want to vary up those stretches a little bit so we're going to go with the old classic of crossfit which is going to be the samson stretch the samson stretch you're going to do 30 seconds either side starts with your fingers interlocked try and make sure that you're not going to let your rib cage pop up so we're going to keep the rib cage down push the fingers away step into a lunge from here push up towards the ceiling and drop your hips down towards the floor push up towards the ceiling drop your hips down towards the floor and we're going to do 30 seconds of that continuum again not letting yourself lean backwards and not letting your, uh, your rib cage pop up so that we're not leaning into the floor. okay guys so for the workout we've got something a little bit fun and a little bit different uh what we're going to do is we've got five rounds of two minutes work one minute rest in your two minutes of work you're going to do five cleans directly into with the remaining of the time max rep air squats for the cleans you'll notice we've left it devoid of weight we've left it devoid of equipment we're going to leave that completely up to you guys but what i have got here guys is a few different options because it's going to depend on a few things what piece of equipment you have uh, how heavy that piece of equipment is and then your the room that you have available to you ideally that clean wants to be fairly heavy yep and it can be up to you you can make it a power clean or you can make it a squat clean okay let's say for example you have a dumbbell and it's a fairly heavy dumbbell we could do five reps of squat clean if i just bring this into the middle yeah where we're going from the floor touch squat clean touch squat clean maybe do five one arm the first round five one arm the first round or if it's only a light kettlebell maybe doing kind of like five reps each arm to start off with for me that's a 15 kilo dumbbell that's going to be quite light i'd probably if i was going to do that go five each arm each round okay but if it was that was maybe like a um a 22 or heavier i might just go for five on one arm as soon as you finish that five straight on as fast as you can for remainder of the time good quality air squats make sure again you're not catching yourself short we're going to a full depth hip crease beneath the level of the knee full extension squeeze your bum if in doubt at the top of each repetition now other option if you've got a dumbbell or a kettlebell is you could do head cutters they're a really good exercise and a really good substitution for medicine ball cleans so where we're going to do a sumo deadlift high pull into a goblet squat and that allows for really gassy movement nice and explosive all the way through so that's your dumbbell or kettlebell options if you've got an odd object um, or you've got a uh, sandbag depending on how heavy it is 
If it's heavy, maybe you're just doing five to the shoulder reps. So you're gonna take that, pretend this is a little bit heavier to the shoulder and back down. And with a heavy sandbag, that's gonna be five reps that's well spent. So there's probably no need to squat. If we've got a lighter sandbag, maybe five cleans to the shoulder, followed by five zercher squats. So we do one, two, three, four, five, drop the bag down into five squats. Similarly, if you've got a barbell, you can do uh, power cleans or you could do squat cleans. Yeah. So if, we, if you're like us, you're struggling with carpet, you could even do hang squat cleans with no feet. So options are going to be, if you've got a nice bit of floor space, you can do power clean. You can do squat clean. Yeah. Uh, or you could do hang squat clean. Completely up to you. So a quick refresher. It's going to be five cleans, straight into as many air squats as you can with the remainder of the two minutes. One minute rest, five times three. Your score at the end of it is a total...